I'd like to draw your attention to the gallery of a former Minister of the Northern Territory Parliament, the Honourable Carl Hampton, former member for Stuart. Welcome to Parliament House. Good to see you here. Uh, I'd also like Honourable Members to advise of the presence in the galleries of students from the Taria School visiting down as part of the Michael Long Leadership and Learning Centre. On behalf of Honourable Members, I welcome you to Parliament House too. Hope you enjoy your time here. Uh, Honourable Members, I now call upon the, uh, the member for Karama to make her speech. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I am humbled to rise out of my seat today as a member for Karama. I must first give thanks to the people of Malak and Karama for putting their faith and trust in me to serve them over the next four years. My family, friends and campaign team worked extremely hard to support me in my dream to make a difference in my community and I thank you all from the bottom of my heart for your efforts. To my Aboriginal countrymen, the white cockatoo dancers, thank you for performing for me this morning. I have vivid memories of dancers from Barunga and Beswick performing in the streets and parks of Catherine where I grew up for the NAIDOC and other celebrations which were organised by Kalano and Mimi Arts and Crafts. As a First Territory Member of Parliament with Torres Strait Islander Heritage, I am intensely reminded of family from my mother's side to which I also pay tribute. My journey could not commence properly without your involvement and the celebration of my diverse cultures. So thank you again. I am but a visitor to this beautiful land that we call Darwin. And as such, I pay my utmost respect to the traditional custodians of the land I live and work on today, the Larrakia people, and acknowledge their elders past and present. I thank you for your determination to protect your land, law and culture, and your willingness to work together in sharing this beautiful country. I acknowledge all of my fellow parliamentarians today. Thank you for walking your path to represent the interests and needs of our Territorians who deserve the very best of what we can all offer. I look forward to working with each of you to achieve many feats both inside and outside of this chamber. I first entered this chamber as a 14-year-old to witness my dad, John R. Kitt, being sworn in as a member for Arnhem back in 1995. I remember having mixed emotions during the ceremony as I sat beside my mum and brothers and stared at the empty chair that my sister Patricia should have been sitting in. But this was not to be, as my sister had lost her battle with leukaemia days before my dad won his seat. This experience taught me that you can choose to walk away when times get tough, or you can choose to keep moving forward. I remember being so proud of my dad for choosing to move forward and admired my mum for maintaining her resilience to stand by my dad and his decision as this, at, at this difficult and sad time of all of our lives. My name is Nari Arkit and I am a proud Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander woman of Chinese descent. I am a Territorian, I am a woman, I am an Arkit. My identity is the basis of my being. It sets the scene for, I, for who I am and what I believe in and what I intend to achieve. My journey is not focused solely on me. It never was. Instead, I stand before you today to acknowledge the trail that has been blazed before me and to give my solemn vow that I will do everything in my power to move us all forward together. I am a 35-year-old woman living in the Northern Territory of Australia in the year 2016, but I can't help but feel that something is missing. I live in a beautiful community. I'm buying my own home. I have, the, I have wonderful family and friends. So what do I have to complain about, right? Well, that's just it. I'm not complaining for me. I'm complaining on behalf of everyone else. The Northern Territory continues to have the highest rates of suicide in the nation, but we have the smallest population base. Therefore, our loss and grief from these deaths resonates and reverberates through our communities. And often it seems that when we start to find our feet, we get knocked back down again. We need to do more. As a community volunteer and former worker in this space, I have come to learn that there are many amazing individuals groups and service providers who work tirelessly to look after our most vulnerable. I take my hat off to you all because it's not an easy job and it can be extremely difficult to look after yourself when you're looking after others. So thank you for everything that you do. Suicide prevention is not a space that one tends to fall into. Instead, those amazing people who I've been fortunate enough to meet along my journey have faced their own tragedies and traumas. They've experienced their own depths of despair and hopelessness and found their way back to the light, often with the help of others. So in return, we pay it forward. Thank you to my colleagues of the Mental Health Directorate for working so tirelessly to improve, sorry, my former colleagues, 
um, for working so tirelessly to improve the lives of Territorians in both the suicide prevention and mental health fields. I cannot express my gratitude for your commitment to the cause and for your support and assistance that you afforded me as the Indigenous Suicide Prevention Project Officer. To my fellow committee members at Suicide Prevention Australia and the Centre for Research Excellence in Suicide Prevention, thank you for promoting the need and value of lived experience in all aspects of suicide prevention. The time I spent on your committees helped me more than you know, and I look forward to following your achievements and successes way into the future. I'd like to acknowledge the work of the Darwin Region Indigenous Suicide Prevention Network in flying the flag to make a difference at the grassroots level locally. My time on Drispen helped me to realise that as a community, we can add value to the world around us. We can do something to help. We can save lives. To Delcy Tamiano, Alexis Higlett, Uncle Anthony Arkit and Phil Dempster, I say thank you. We worked hard to achieve our goals together and still live by the Drispen motto of get involved, give hope, save a life. Life is full of ups and downs and we must all find a way to cope when it seems like all hope is lost. If you are struggling right now and you can't find your light, please let me know and I will help you. I offer this wholeheartedly because I too have struggled to find my way back to the light at times and it was offers like this that helped me to get through. As a young person growing up in the Territory, life was sweet. My 20s were focused on fun, family and friendships. It wasn't until 2004 when everything changed for me. I was encouraged by an amazing mentor and person in general, Ani Trish Angus, to apply for the Youth Roundtable. I remember feeling hesitant because I didn't think that I was good enough to be considered for this opportunity and I almost didn't apply for fear of rejection. But I did and I'm really glad I did. The Youth Roundtable provided me with the opportunity to think about more than just my life and to consider ways that I could help to improve the lives of my family, friends and community. The program has run since 1997 and there have been more than 300 alumni having participated to date, including the brilliant member for Kasharina, Lauren Moss. The Office of Youth Affairs do an amazing job to support young Territorians through the roundtable and I encourage you all to view the alumni document and to witness the diversity of our young people who have come through and the amazing things that they have achieved so far. I understand that this year's Youth Roundtable members are nearing the end of their program and I wish you all the very best for your final meeting in December. The Youth Roundtable changed my life for the better and I'm sure it can do the same for you. Community engagement and individual empowerment are tools that I have used as a volunteer. I've learned from trial and error over the years that the best way to achieve a goal was to work together as a team, to encourage others to be a part of the effort and to share the load, to be inclusive in your approach and to make sure you communicate clearly with all stakeholders. I have lived this approach for more than a decade now and I intend to continue this in this manner as I serve the good people of Malak and Kurama. My achievements and successes were attributed to the support and love I received from those close to me. And I must thank my amazing family and friends for all they have and continue to do for me. Firstly, to my mum and dad, thank you for sacrificing so much to give us, your children, the life we have been afforded. Thank you for your unwavering support of my many dreams across the years and for having my back through all of my ups and downs. To my brothers, Darren and Jonathan, thank you for being my protectors and for being here for me today. And thank you for raising my beautiful nieces and nephews with the same values and respect that we were raised with ourselves. To my cousins, Carly and Joel, at the very beginning of my campaign, it was just the three of us. Thank you for believing in me and supporting, in me, supporting me until I found my feet. This was no easy task, I know, but you helped me to believe in my capability and I can't thank you enough for that. To my Rice girls, my Catherine girls, my Nile brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews, best friends, brother boys and sister girls, and also to my many campaign managers, Bella and Tyra Lee. Thank you for everything and for supporting me along the way. No matter what endeavor I've chosen to take up over the years, you've all been there, supporting the cause, but more importantly, supporting me. To my amazing Adam, it couldn't have been easy for you to listen to all of my worries and doubts through my long and um, endearing 10 month campaign, but you did. You encouraged me to enjoy the ride and to celebrate my achievements along the way. And you believed in me when I found it really hard to believe in myself. So thank you for never giving up on me. To my big sister, Trisha, and my baby brother, Barty, thank you for teaching me to smile through all of my challenges and to never give up. And also to do what I can to brighten the lives of others. I hope I make you proud. To the people of Karama and Malak, thank you again for putting your faith in me to serve you as your local member. 
I look forward to working with each of you to improve our beautiful community and to make sure that your children enjoy their childhood memories of our community, just like I did. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Members. I now call on the Member for Stewart.